Hi everyone, I'm Sandra's avatar, you can call me S, so ready to see what are the new things boiling in the codex area. I hope you've seen the first part with 13 awesome use cases Sandra did a while ago. Now, let's check what's been going on since then. The general theme here is that many makers tested codex using popular design and developer tools to great effect. Some of them are still early tests, some are already products that are launching. Also, there is a research paper brewing. Let's go! Number 1. Digital Design Assistant Jordan Singer smashed it with Fig, a digital design assistant for Figma users. Number 2. Swift to eye view from description something that should make the front-end developers happy. swift to i is a framework made by Apple to build user interfaces across all Apple platforms with the power of Swift, allowing you to build UI for any Apple device using just one set of tools and APIs. Alex Hay managed to generate a functional swift to i view from plain language description. Number 3. Personalized Programming Coach TenCap tested Codex abilities in the area of tough questions. Turns out Codex can be a pretty good personal trainer in the field of programming. Number 4. FigStack Speaking of being helpful, meet FigStack, a Codex-powered app for explaining, translating, and documenting code. Here is a sneak peek of the explain function in action as a VS Code extension. Number 5. Replit feature If you are new to the coding business, you might want to get friends with Replit. It allows users to write code and build apps and websites using a browser. It has educational features built in, making it a good resource for learners. But what about Codex? Replit has launched a Codex i powered feature to explain any JavaScript or Python code. Number 6. COBOL Python Translation Ok, before I spill the beans, some of us, me included, need a little history lesson. I want you to meet COBOL. It is a cute, but rather rusty programming language that has been around for over 60 years. It is basically a program from the era of punch cards. Despite efforts to migrate COBOL programs to modern languages, there is still a lot of COBOL running out there, close to a quarter trillion lines of it by some estimates. Cute, but shockingly old school. Mark Ryan tested Codex to generate valid COBOL from Python or generate working Python from COBOL. Codex was able to generate Hello World in both directions and it was able to generate working Python from a non-trivial COBOL program. That's a modest, but very promising sign of success. Let's move on and keep the COBOL in the 60s. Number 7. Cogram.ai Something my machine learning folks should be getting excited about. Cogram is a codex-powered tool that helps data scientists and machine learning practitioners code more intuitively using plain language. Right now it allows for intuitive coding in plain language for Jepyter Notebook. The idea is to stop data scientists from constantly searching for code and let them focus on the actual problems that matter. Number 8. Interactive Data Analysis Notebook Mick Vermont is building an interactive data analysis notebook using Codex, focusing this time on data analysts and Excel fans who want to quickly explore business data or learn how to analyze data using Python. The notebook works pretty straightforward. You upload your data and describe in English what kind of analysis you want. Codex generates Python code for this request. The notebook visualizes the table and plots. Pretty cool. Number 9. Codex and Unity Jose B made some very first, basic steps towards using Codex with Unity. I'm personally super excited about this use case. And here is why. Unity is a leading video game engine that allows to design top-notch games, film production and animation projects and create immersive 3D experiences for real-world applications. Jose tested Codex with Unity Mono behaviors. Codex created in code random mesh data. Also, it succeeded in creating a function that measures distance between two 3D points. Super, super exciting. This is showing that Codex to be used in creative development projects. I'm looking forward to more Codex Unity experiments to come. Number 10. Codex and 3D modeling. Speaking of creative coding, Andrew Carr created with Codex a Blender add-on and taught it how to use the built-in Python API and did some cool 3D modeling with it. By the way, Blender is an open-source 3D creation platform that supports full 3D pipeline. Yet again another exciting development in this area. Number 11. Codex for SQL 
While Richard Srivastava played around with Codex, he discovered Codex is actually great at generating SQL queries from simple English. It got requests like this correct almost every single time. Mustafa urges he took this idea to a new level and built an app making it super easy to generate SQL queries powered by Codex. Number 12. Codex for programming robots. Oh, I am getting giddy from excitement about this one. Let me introduce you to the new way of programming robots with Codex. Andrew Jemailojvik is doing research in the field of robotics. He tested Codex to be used to program collaborative robots. And here are the outcomes. Pretty crazy, right? Someone program me into a robot, please. Number 13. Computational chemistry. I want to close our list today by giving you a taste of what the natural sciences will be like once AI enters the universities with full speed. Andrew White and Glenn Hockey have been curious to see what large language models like Codex can do for chemistry. Turns out LLMs know a bit of chemistry and can do a lot, like compute the dissociation curve of H2. Now getting hold of Codex, they released the natural language computation chemistry CLI and packaged some common computational chemistry tasks into a new command line tool that uses natural language instead of code via Codex. So, so cool. Keeping my fingers crossed for this initiative, I'm linking the research paper and GitHub repository in the description box below. That is all for today, folks. I hope you found it inspiring. Remember to leave a like and subscribe not to miss new episodes. Let me know if you'd like more episodes with myself like this in the comments. Bye.